When you start any new software development work and you're confident you have the skills to get it done to spec and in the allotted time, it can be disheartening when you start the work and seem to bounce from problem to problem. As the deadline looms closer, it's easy to blame the tools you're using or the developers of the free open source software you're relying on, but there's one third option that most of us find too uncomfortable to face. Maybe you're just not as good as you thought you were. I know exactly how this feels because four weeks ago I started building a new software project and the deadline has come and gone. I now realize that my current skill set doesn't match the expectation I set for myself, but far from seeing that as a negative, realizing I'm not as good as I thought I was is actually very liberating because it opens the door to improving yourself. That's why in 2025 I'm throwing away any notions I might have had of being highly skilled or even an expert developer and I'm going to adopt the beginner's mindset to start again from scratch. In this video I'm going to share some of the traps I've fallen into on this recent project that have slowed me down and how starting again as a beginner might be the reset you need to actually make real progress in 2025. Did you ever wonder in a coding interview why they always ask you those tricky questions? Often questions that are unrelated to the work you actually end up doing if you land the job. By showcasing that you know more than other candidates about a specialist area of software development, it's a way for employees to choose one candidate over the other. Problem is when you try to apply skills you learn in a job, like the software development skills I worked on for 13 years, when you come to build your own project, you realize there's a lot missing. That's because different success criteria criteria apply. Back-end development is only a tiny part of that. You've got to come up with an idea, define a minimum viable product, create a design, create the front end, handle marketing and sales, or in other words, do everything you need to do to actually create valuable software, as opposed to in a job taking care of that one tiny part of the process, you've got to become a generalist. So if you've ever specialized while working a job in back-end, front-end, AI, graphics, infrastructure, databases, or anything else, when you're working in that job, it's easy to feel like you know everything about software development, but you actually don't, and you just know everything about that one very narrow field. And if you try to build a full web application, you might come in for a big surprise. For example, yesterday, I realized that even after decades of writing software, I'd never built a documentation site. Every little part of this, like the sidebar, the navigation structure, the icons, and rendering markdown as text is a little mini challenge for which 13 years of backend experience isn't much help. So when you realize you're no longer a big fish in a small pond, but a rather small fish in a pond full of new skills to learn, what can you do about it? Do you code using a multi-monitor setup or do you prefer simply using your laptop screen? For the longest time, I was convinced that the secret to coding productivity was having as big a screen as possible. But having just spent three and a half weeks in Japan with this laptop, which has a small 13 inch screen, I started to realize that I can write code given any setup. What I'm saying is that your preconceived notions of what's best or even what's right and wrong is just a story you make up in your head and use to more easily make decisions in your life. In software development, that's often which tools should you use, NPM versus Yarn, which frameworks you should use, React versus Vue, or which methodology you should use, test-driven development or get it out the door quick and dirty style. From my previous life as a Java developer, I still carry a lot of preconceived ideas about what's the best way to do things. Some of these ideas like clean code, single responsibility principle, and 12-factor applications are super relevant when you're working in a team, but trying to apply this mindset when you're building your own web app on your own only leads to pain and frustration. When you realize that you're working in a different field of software where different rules apply, that's when you need to look at your skill set, figure out what's missing and fill in the blanks. Alternatively, just admit to yourself that you're not an expert. Your decades of specialist experience are no match for someone with just a few years of more relevant experience in this new domain. Even though a lot of the knowledge I picked up in the job about how the internet works is still super relevant to many areas of software development, everything else around what's the best language to use, which frameworks to pick, and even how to write code, I'm willing to throw out the window this year and start again with a beginner's mindset if that's what's necessary to master this new area of building my own web apps. And although that might sound painful, in a kind of sadistic way, it's actually a blessing in disguise. 
This web app bootstrap project I'm working on right now is the first project where I'm actually going to be publishing my code for others to read as opposed to building a web app that people just use. And that makes me feel kind of vulnerable. When you position yourself as an expert, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to believe you need to know all the answers. The fact is that so-called experts get it wrong all the time, whether that's coming up with impractical solutions to software problems or predicting what the financial markets are going to do next week. Thinking I'm some some kind of expert who needs to showcase perfect code in this new project is probably one of the reasons I missed my deadline as I tried to make my code perfect. Well now I'm starting 2025 with a beginner's mindset, it takes the pressure off completely. Because actually whether you're a novice or an expert, that doesn't matter when it comes to building your own projects. What really matters is getting results for users that actually use that project. When you use Gmail, Amazon or Spotify, you don't care whether the person that wrote the feature you use had been coding for two days or two decades, as long as it does what you expect. When you face the prospect of not being as good a developer as you thought you were, it's a humbling experience, but maybe it's the only gateway through which you can actually start to improve. Let me leave you with this thought. What areas of software development have you convinced yourself that you're an expert in? Although you may be getting results in those areas, could your expert level knowledge actually be preventing you from building the kind of projects that you're really interested in. If you truly want to pursue those projects, then like me, you may have to start again as a beginner. But it's up to you to decide whether that's a step you're willing to take to turn what might be a dream into reality. See you in the next one.